all mm. yours, Ashley. Awesome. So, um, hi everyone. My name is uh, Ashley. I am sorry, I'm about to cough. <laughs> um, I use she her pronouns, and I'm joining you from the lands of the Ngunnawal people. Um, I am a white fe a female with pale skin, and I am we wearing glasses and a striped t-shirt. And I will be helping you help facilitate this important discussion on inclusion in early childhood. Before we begin, I would like to acknowledge that even though we are meeting virtually, I am meeting from the lands of the Ngunnawal people. We would like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land on which we work, live and play. We pay deep respects to elders past, present and emerging and acknowledge that sovereignty was never ceded, always was, always will be. That there is no justice without First Nation justice and I would like to encourage everyone uh, watching to pop in the chat what lands they're coming from. Okay. In today's webinar we will discuss what school ready could mean for you and we will provide tips on information and supports. Um, after that we will have a five minute break and we will then come back together and answer some audience questions and have some final reflections. Uh, Sida believes hearing directly from young people with disability about their experiences helps families, caregivers and communities to have high expectations and aspirations for all children. We ask today that we are all respectful of one another and we are inclusive. Sometimes in talking about our experiences, we might get a question or cover a topic that is sensitive or includes tough stuff to hear. During this and other webinars, we use content notes. We will warn you what we are about to talk about, sorry, what we are about to talk about is for example, ableism or discrimination. People can choose to not hear the sensitive information. Later on, we, later on, we, the storytellers might not want to answer a particular question posed and the cider team might step in. This isn't cancelling the question or shutting down the, the conversation. We want to make sure everyone's needs are met, yours and ours. Uh, just a reminder that if you feel this webinar brought up some difficult or uncomfortable feelings for you to please reach out for support. You can access help by heading to our website, cider.org.au. We will put the names of the supports in the chat as well. Um, so each panelist will now introduce themselves. So maybe if we could just go around and introduce, I think if I am correct. Oh, there's no communication order for that. My apologies. Um, so I don't know if Will or Jera might like to introduce themselves. Yeah, sure. My name's Will, everyone. Um, I use him, him pronouns. Um, yeah. Thanks, Will. Jera, over to you. Thanks, guys. Uh, my name is Jera. I am a man. I live on the Darik and Gungawa land. I... I am tall and I have a moustache and beard and I like to wear a hat. I am wearing blue glasses today to go with my blue checkered shirt. Thank you, Gerra. Um, I'll throw over to Miranda next, please. Miranda speaking. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Miranda and I work for Cider. Um, I'll be on the webinar today, but largely with my camera off. Um, just helping with some of the technology. So just for your own awareness, um, the chat's um, engaged. So please feel free to engage um, with the content and with um, other participants in the session through the chat. Um, but there's also a Q&A function as well. So later on in the session, there'll be some Q&A with the young people. Um, so we please encourage you to ask questions because I think it's a really great opportunity to hear about sc school experience from um, those who are going through it or have recently just finished. So. Yeah. Um, oh, sorry. And I should also give a visual description. Uh, I've got brown, dark brown hair that's tied back in a bun. I'm wearing brown glasses. Um, I'm wearing a beige jumper with a black turtleneck t-shirt popping out the front. 
um, and my background wall behind me is white. So I will please pass to Daniel. Thank you. G'day folks, my name is Daniel. I'm the Youth Programs Manager at SIDA and today I'll be our Safety and Wellbeing Officer. Um, to give a quick visual description of myself, I'm wearing a grey hoodie. Um, it's not even a hoodie, there's no hood. A grey jumper um, and I have uh, quite patchy facial hair, but it's brown and dark um, with dark glasses and um, wildly unkept hair that was unable to get itself in order this morning, so I apologise. Um, and in my background, I have a white background, but I also have a banner with Cider's logo um, just behind me. Um, so my role today is Safety and Wellbeing Officer. And what you, if any of the content for today is tricky or there's anything that you want to debrief through, um, you're more than welcome to either send me a message directly via, via Zoom through a private message, or if you prefer to talk or text, feel free to contact me on the number that I um, provided. Um, just being really mindful as well, and that was, you know, Pre, uh, presented by Ashley and um, Miranda's reposted um, that we, um, if you do want to debrief with a professional, um, not to say that I'm not professional, but I'm also not a counsellor, um, is that there are services and supports out there um, to do debriefing and there's some great um, counselling support hotlines in case you do need to talk through anything or if any of this content hits a little bit too close to home. Um, but yeah, really keen to hear from some young peeps about inclusive education and um, have an opportunity to connect with people here today. So I'll throw it back to Sue. Thank you, Daniel. Sue speaking. So my name is Sue Tape. I also work for CIDA. Um, I have been delighted to be part of this webinar process and working with young people like Jera, Ashley and Will to uh, share their stories and share their experiences. Um, so visual description of me, I am a middle-aged white woman with uh, slightly, like Daniel, unkempt, uh, shortish brown hair this morning and I'm wearing uh, dark glasses. Um, and uh, my pronouns are she, her, and calling in from the lands of the Yogura and the Turrbal people up here in Queensland where it's a little wet and cold and I can never be allowed to complain to my Victorian colleagues um, and for those in other cold places in the state. Um, and we also are again joined by our Auslan interpreters um, to make sure that this recording and beyond is accessible for everybody. So captions should be enabled. You should be able to see those at the bottom of your screen or press the CC button. And I've probably just covered some of the content that Ashley was going to talk about later, but I will um, I'll hand back to Ashley. Which is all good. And I must admit, I did forget to mention, um, to ask what's your favourite school, favourite memory of early school years, but that's okay. Maybe if we just want to put it in the chat to give people a bit of an idea. For me personally, mine was Healthy Harold. I used to love going to <laughs> Healthy Harold and I'm a bit of a bit of a strange one, but yeah. Um, so yeah, just to kind of really reiterate what Sue said, um, we'll have an Auslan interpreter. Uh, yeah, that's all been explained. Uh, okay, so if we wanna go to slide nine, please. The other thing to cover on that um, slide is that everybody who's on that previous slide um, is featured in today's webinars as well. Yes. Our um, our photos there. There's some smiley faces that might look very familiar to everybody. Okay, yeah, just to quickly sum up. Um, so this is webinar number five. The earlier webinars covered uh, inclusion, identity, language, and where to start with inclusion in early childhood. We also looked at the role early intervention in early childhood and tips of where to start with information supports and funding. The next and final webinar is in October and we'll recap many of the key concepts. Please head over to Eventbrite to register or check out CIDA's social media accounts. You can also access this in all our previous webinars from our website under the Early Childhood Issue page. So I think I've got to hand it back to you now, Sue. Thank you, Ashley. Um, 
Before we launch into some of the stories that we're going to hear from Ashley, Will and Jarrah, um, we wanted to touch on the, what school ready means. So um, it would be my expectation that um, you've started to see discussions on social media and in um, mainstream media as well about the idea of children being ready for school. So we thought it was a timely opportunity to pull that apart a little bit um, and also to bring into the conversation the experiences and the thoughts and tips from young people as well. Um, but I thought what we would start with is actually getting each of the young people to tell us what um, the idea of school ready, ready means to them. And I've primed them already with this question and um, forced, forced a lot of them to, to think back to their own school experiences. Um, and we're, we're trying to take a, a fairly positive um, approach today, but there, there may well be some tricky stories. But we thought we'd start with what does school ready mean to you? And I'm going to ask Will first. Um, and just while we're having this discussion, um, we'll momentarily turn the slides off so you can see those lovely faces. Um, so, uh, Will, I'll get you to go first. If you could tell us what the words school ready means to you, please. Um, okay, so this is a really a, a hard question to answer, actually. Um, so school ready means um, that you're ready for school. Like you've got everything prepared. Like I was prepared two years before I went to school um, just for the dedication, you know. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I was... Yeah, so school ready means to me is that you're ready for school and you got everything prepared, like your books. Um, if you needed picture cards, which I did when I was younger, um, PECs, we call them. Um, it, PECs stand for Picture Exchange Communication System. Um, yeah, so, yeah. Will, can I just ask you, when you're talking about the pictures, is that something that you would point to to communicate with rather than yes, using words? Yes, that's, that's how I communicated back then because I couldn't talk. No. Nick that's can't funny. shut me up. <laughs> that's fantastic. Thank you, Will. Okay, <laughs> I'm going to throw over to Jera next. Jera, I was wondering if you could share with us um, what does school ready mean to you, please? I don't remember much about starting school mum said she was ready for me to go to school I started early when I was four years old I went to special school that was part of North Rocks in Institute. Institute for Deaf and Blind I needed a place that would help me use my eyes that was flat to help me walk that could help me with toileting transport and then to communicate and hard had therapy I'll show you a photo. Oh, so that's the school, isn't it, Jera? Yeah, it is. It's the Alice Fetched School. Thank you see everyone. Your school photo. Yeah. So that's yeah. you at four, Jera? Mini Jera, yeah. <laughs> yeah mini Jera. <laughs> and you were saying you don't necessarily, you don't remember that time. No, I don't remember that time. Only mum, only mum remembers certain things about school. Only mum remembers it all. So yep. I don't, I don't, but my mum does. So it's all. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thanks, Jera. And Ashley, I'll throw over to you. What does school ready mean to you? Um, yeah, well, well, yep, okay. um, well, I guess to me, school ready from a disabled child's point of view is, um, really it's being ready for the classroom experience really in my opinion um and kind of no matter what that classroom environment may entail so yeah that's what I kind of think that's great thank you very much um I'll get Miranda to put up the slide 11 so one of the things that um we were wanting people to think about um was a concept um that school ready is about 
lots of elements. So there's a, there's a delightful equation on the screen here. Um, so it starts with ready families, ready early childhood services, plus ready communities, plus ready schools equals ready children. So the idea is that you've got um, the um, family supporting, families and community supporting the child. Um, there's a role for early childhood services. So Ashley was talking about from, you know, a disabled child's perspective, that could be um, input from the therapists or the kindy or the early intervention um, people that are involved in that space. But then also um, talking about ready schools. So one of the things that we've done um, for this webinar excuse me, sorry, little hiccups, um, is prepared a worksheet that has this same equation mapped out um, as a prompter, as some thoughts uh, or a place for you. So there's a worksheet um, and it would have been part of the email that you got to confirm, but it's also, um, Miranda's popped it into the chat for us as well. So it's a Word document, or well, there's a PDF version in there as well where you can think about this same equation um, in the context of you and your situation. And it might be that we have people joining us today that are part of that ready community, or it might be um, families getting organised, or it might actually pe be people within early childhood services. Now, there's obviously lots of formal elements involved in being school ready, starting with the enrollment form. Um, but there's also um, the other aspects around, um, I suppose, attitude towards school. Uh, remembering back um, to my children that it was about excitement about going to school um, and interest in what that was going to look like. So we encourage people to think about all the different parts of the equation and that it's not just about focusing on the child. Um, and that's the one of the things we really want to encourage. So part of that, if we're looking at um, ready families, might be about having um, the whole of the family um, think about what school will mean for changes in routine, changes in environment, those sorts of things. So I'll just get Miranda just to duck down to the next slide. Um, so this is, and don't expect you to read it, this is um, what's in that worksheet that we've shared the link to in the chat. So we've got a whole host of helpful links and we've tried to organize them into four different groupings. So there's stuff around planning the basics. So Will talked before about having, you know, pens and pencils and bags and uniform and that sort of stuff. So there's um, some information about that. Then we've got the official information. Now we've focused in on government schools, but there are links in there as well for Catholic and independent schools. We've also then the third one, knowledge, to help is around the different areas that relate to students with disability or students with learning difficulties. So we've talked about the disability standards for education and other helpful links that will go in there as well. And then the final page that we've got there is across the different state and territories. We've got links to some groups. Um, some of those are about young people's groups. Some of those are about um, family groups, but things that can um, maybe give you some insight into starting school um, in your state and territory from the perspective of a, a student with disability or a young child with um, learning needs. So I'd really encourage you to have a look at that worksheet um, because it will give you obviously a load of links in one spot, um, but also an opportunity to um, use the document to think about some of your own planning and the people that you interact with. Um, so, yeah, and also in that worksheet is that equation as well um, with a little bit of space where if you wanted to pop your own notes in um, around what those different things are. As we, um, as we work through the next section where we're going to hear directly from um, young people about their experiences, um, their advice for families, 
Um, there'll be different parts of that equation that we're going to discuss. So it'll be a little bit, if you can go back up one slide for me, Miranda. Um, we're going to talk about what it means from a family and from a community and from a school, but also from um, a student's perspective as well. So before, <clears throat> Before we um, jump into the um, stories, I just want you to have a look at slide 14. Um, and these are some of the things that um, we'll be covering as we go through um, this section and the stories, is to think about some of the planning of the basics. So where will your child go to school? What do you need? How do you prepare? And how do you prepare the school as well? So I'm going to ask each person to um, talk to me about some of these things and their perspectives, um, and that will involve um, sharing their experiences. So the first one is, um, and we can, we can jump off the, the slides now if you like, is um, I would like to ask Will, um, I suppose, thinking back to your school experience, well, good and not so great, what suggestions or tips do you have for the families of young children? What do you okay. want them to think about when they're preparing for school? Okay, okay. This is this is a hard one because I have to think because I started school 14 years ago. So it's it's a couple of years ago. So uh, yeah, it's I have to think about this. So, um, okay. So first seek um, the school. So um, talk to the school first. If you're not getting anywhere, then seek the Department of Education, your local district office. Um, that they actually really helped me to get into school um, because the school would, wouldn't go anywhere um, because they were afraid of me um, destroying the NAP plan results, even though that I was only in kindergarten and wouldn't do the NAP plan until year three. Um, but the assistant principal at the time um, was tremendous and got me in and... Um, so, Will, can I ask you a question? When you say the assistant principal was tremendous, what sort of practical things did they do? What sort, how did they how did they show that they understood? Um, so the assistant principal, um, she basically got me in there from the get go. Um, from complaining to the Department of Education. Um, yeah, so um, she because um, I've got cerebral palsy. Um, they had to make sure that the stairs were accommodated. Um, they had, so she did that for me. She got someone, someone in to do that. Um, she got funding. She didn't know a lot about the funding, but she was amazing with the funding. She um, got a couple of teachers' aides or SLSOs, they call them in New South Wales. Um, so yeah, she was amazing and yeah. There was, was there also something that she was doing about communicating with your family as well? So did she keep your family updated about that process? She did. She did. She kept us updated, um, like when, um, school, when preschools, um, do their transition, week or days to the school um she um kept taught well my sister went to the school before me and um they uh kept talking to us and um and then i started there in kindergarten and uh yeah so it always would you say will that it always helps um if you've got an older sibling who's been to the school because you know what the school is like already as a family? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. 
Um, I might pass to Gera now, if that's okay. And Gera, um, yeah, I yeah, was... thank you, Caesar. Just have a listen, man. Oh, what so, to... oh, sorry, my my video was just dropping in and out. No problem at all. So I was really keen to hear from you. Um, what tips you had, um, for families and children starting school? So, so when I went to school, we didn't have uniforms, but I changed it, and we just had to wear blue. I needed shoes with Velcro and pants with elastic. Elastic. At high school, I was in a special unit at Xavier College. Can you show people the photo of yourself? So this is around, so this is me at high school wearing a nice blue uniform with a nice Snazzy. scarf and some <laughs> nice glasses. Yep. So there's when I went to that. And then next part of my story is my mum and dad had to get permission to adjust my school uniform so I could put it on and off the tie and shirt with buttons were too hard and my trousers had to be changed to have elastic. A more, There's a little bit more to the story here. Mum said, Mum said to ask about secondhand uniforms so you could have spares at school and at home. Bag, it's good to ask the school about the type and size of bag. Mine was too big for me, but this is the teacher speaking to me, saying my first teacher was lovely and spoke to mum and dad a lot. We used the communication book every day from school to home. We got to visit school before I started. On the first day, mum and dad stayed for the day. It's good to find out the rules and routines first so you don't worry. I like having a visual timetable at school at home so I know what I'm doing and who will be with me. So we'll show you the visual timetable now. I'll, I'll take you guys to show you the visual timetable. Thank you. That would be great. So this is the one that you use now, right, Jera? That's exactly right. So, so, But you've had something like this growing up to help you um, with what's going to happen each day? Yeah, that's right. Support workers will tell me what I'm doing each day, whether I'm working or not or gig, um, gigging or not as well. So it's exciting. So you've got the faces of the people there that are involved in all the activities, yeah? Yeah, I've got the faces of people in the community as well. So. And pictures of the activities. And pictures of the activities I'm going to do each week. So, yeah, that yep. just gives you a heads up. On yep. That. So then you you know what to expect and, and what's happening each day, right? Yes, absolutely, So Absolutely. Yep. And how, how does having that make you feel? How do you feel, like, do you feel... Um, more comfortable when you know what's coming up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It helps me feel more comfortable. Like, when when should I do these? Or when should I or when should I think about it first? Yep. Or something like that yep. is a good tip for families, mums and dads to remember. Yeah, it, organizes your day for you. it just organises my day for me and then I can just go with the flow. Yep. It also means, doesn't it, that the people in your life um, know what happened the day before or what's coming up in the week? So oh, other oh, how other successful people could... it was, maybe? Yeah. Is, yeah. That, is that a context? Yeah, yeah, no, that's good. That's good. Okay. Um, we'll come back to you with some more questions, Jarrett, but I'm just going to ask Ashley now. Um, okay, no worries. For her um, thoughts around tips for families and children starting school, and I'm going to throw a curly one in too, Ashley. Um, Jera talked about um, communication books. So um, if we get a chance, it'd be great to hear from your perspective about communication books as well. Um, so you can start start wherever you like. Yeah, no, yeah. Um, so just to give a bit of a context to my situation starting school, because it's a bit of a peculiar one. Um, I so my prim my primary schooling was in New South Wales public schools, more specifically Sydney. Um, I was I actually started a week after all the other kindergartners had started, um, and this was due to a couple of things. One, we were moving back from Cross Harbour, and the second one being, um, if anyone is aware, I don't know if this is still the same. This was in two thousand five. Um, the cutoff, the age cutoff for New South Wales public schools was back then July 2000. 
I'm born in March 2000. So there was some chewing and throwing with my parents and um, the school, whether if I would be right to start. Then with the, it was the majority of um, kids who were born in 1999 with some 2000 kids or if I should wait another year. So just to give, because my situation is a little bit odd in that sense. Um, really though, the first, the kind of things I thought of when um, these questions were proposed to us was um, I remember, um, so for context, I am autistic and um, I am very routine based, uh, like many autistics. And I recall my mum getting this big book for me um, about school and starting school. It was something she picked up from Big W or something like that. And I remember her sitting it down and reading um, reading through it with me. And, and it has, it would have things like, you have a uniform, you have to do this, you have to do X, Y, and Z. But I remember getting quite frustrated because I remember seeing in that book, you could eat in the library. And as the fast forward to going to my school, you couldn't eat in the library, you couldn't spend your time in the library. So I got quite frustrated. And so I think really looking back at that, that situation now, if you have a child like me who is very routine focused, um, don't source out school-based stuff that isn't a part of your child's intended school um because yeah like I explained I got told one thing from my mum showing me this is what school's like but when I actually got to school didn't really happen so that's kind of one of the big things I want to um reiterate just, and um just jump in there just for a minute Ashley sorry um I've noticed that there are a lot of schools um sharing social stories um so the the using the social story construction um to tell students about the sort of the first day or the first week experience and including um pictures of the particular school and the particular teacher that the student will get um and I think my understanding is that the effort that goes into creating those social stories or those videos or those pictures is well worth it for a whole range of students. Definitely, definitely. And just even now, because back then in um, 2005, because I had I actually had social stories, not for that, but later in my kindergarten stage, I remember having social stories. Um, looking at it now with the resources that are around, it's not actually that hard to find a template online about social stories and then for just for whoever is writing it up whether it's the parent the educator whatever just being like and changing the things that are relevant um and that are needed but yeah I'm a big fan of social stories um and think we probably need to utilize them a lot more as someone who works in education um uh we need to utilize them a lot more and um but yeah when but yes I think they are a very so good resource for starting school and I can I just check social stories are um, obviously have pictures and words in them, um, but they're things that the adult or the sibling um, in the family can read to the child, right? So um, they can they can walk them through it, but then the child might have something that they can keep coming back to if they're, if they're not reading yet. Yes, yes, you're testing my knowledge here, Sue. <laughs> but, um, um, so, well, I, really, I can explain my social stories and what the yes. social stories I had. So I had um, the ones that my I assume it was my teacher, wouldn't be surprised if my mum helped, um, but the um, what the teacher would bring in is because, again, with autism comes a lot of social issues and I was having a lot of typical normal social issues. And um, I remember my teacher sitting me down reading. I was I was an okay reader, but she read it to me. Um, social stories around making friends and all that kind of stuff. And um, she would uh, um, she would uh, she would input she would put in uh, my special interests or things that I liked to kind of help me relate it back to things I could say or things I could practice, those kinds of things. So that's, I guess, really one thing that could kind of help with that. Thank you. And I cut you off, sorry, Ashley, from um, your point, sorry, taking totally off. So I'll go, I'll go back to the question. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, that's all good, that's all good. As you can see, I am a fan of social stories. <laughs> yes. um, Second thing I wanted to add, going back to what I've written down, um, 
so despite having those supports, my school setup wasn't the greatest and it was pretty poor. Um, and in this, the biggest thing was communication was not good just because there was not, there, there, there was, how do I say this? There was, um, no one was willing to put the support in, if that makes any sense. Um, and unfortunately, this still kind of happens within schools. Um, one thing I do wish uh, my parents had the ability to do back in 2000 uh, and five, um, I had the ability to harness social media groups and networks in a positive way um, to oh. reach out into um, to reach out to people in our local community to see what the school is like and just any tips and ideas to get an idea of this school is was right for me respectfully of course I do want to emphasized doing it respectfully um so that's really one thing I wish we had the capability back then to do sorry I was talking to myself then um actually that's probably a really good um link into the next sort of area that we had grouped together and that was about information so I asked Will, Jera and Ashley to think about what information do they wish that their family had access to when they were starting school and what types of information would have been really helpful um, so I'll start with um, Will but I think the the thing to acknowledge and um, when we were preparing for this webinar um, Will, Ashley and, and two of the young people who are helping out on tonight's webinar were really keen for us to emphasise that um, it really helps to know what the policies and um, processes are in place at the school that you're heading to. So we call that the official information um, and going to the school's website and checking out, you know, how do they explain the school? What, what policies are in place? Um, what do they talk about when they talk about funding or forms and stuff like that? So that was one of the things that everyone wanted to, to make sure we covered. Um, so I'll jump to Will now, really keen to hear about what information you think is really important for people to have. Oh, that's a tough one because there's so many things that parents need to know about the school that they're sending their child to. Like, um, I guess their funding, if they've got funding or not. Um, how's that funding going to be used? Um, who their teacher is, is a big one. Um, oh, yeah. That's okay. Thank you. Well, um, Jara, I'm going to throw to you now. Um, and I know that yeah. you've you've had a good discussion about this as well, but um, what information do you think it's good to know on the first day or the, or the first term at school? Well, it's good to know what's going to happen, like what things you are learning, who's in your class, how to communicate with your teacher, how the school will let you know how you're going, any changes that are happening, special outings or visitors, teachers away swimming, dates to plan ahead might be a struggle like, parent teacher interviews celebrations it's good to know what school expects of parents and students what do you do if you're away or sick or have seen a specialist would what do you do if you are having a party and want to invite friends the school made me a book for me to know the people in my class the school sent home photos which helped mum and dad know what I was doing and so that could talk so they could talk, could talk with me about school. Show you this photo. Yeah, and I'll show you this photo of a friend of mine that I know from school called Nikki. Yeah, and this, she's in the photo with all your friends. From they, classroom 10, if uh, people want to see that. Yeah. So they, they gave you this book, is that yeah, right? yeah, yeah. They, yeah, they gave me this book about school, yeah. And who was going to be in your class. Yeah, and who was going to be in my class. I think maybe that book would be helpful too if you wanted to tell your mum and dad a story about somebody in your class as well, wouldn't it? 
So you can point to somebody in that photo and explain about that person if you wanted to come home and and tell mum and dad about the, the day. Yeah, 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 I could. Yeah. Okay, cool. I might try for that. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Jared. No worries. Um, so, Ashley, um, information. <laughs> Where to start? <laughs> And I won't um, interrupt you this time. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. That's okay. Um, I guess really the two big things I wish my parents were aware of, this is probably more, I guess, one's really more within the school setting and one's kind of getting ready to, ready to get into school. Um, the first one I think it would be really important was I kind of wish um, that those around me knew to look into my report comments a bit better in terms of my academic process. Um, so I used to get comments around, um, I would get letters in the wrong order, they'd get, they'd be close, but I'd have one off or I might have an extra something. Um, and it was always just put down to um, the fact that, oh, she's just a bad speller, that's okay. Um, to fast forward, ooh, five years later, I actually get diagnosed with dyslexia. And because of the issues that um, weren't properly addressed from, I guess, parents or even educators raising the issue with my parents, um, I face a lot of issues now when it comes to um, literacy now. I can read very well. I can even read in different languages. Um, but it's really, I struggle with the fundamentals. So sounding out, um, knowing what certain sounds are, all that kind of stuff, because I miss that milestone whilst I somewhat reached that milestone, I am finding, a lot later might I add, I am finding I'm still having some sort of issues with it because that something that you're really supposed to pick up at about five or six, I picked up at 10 and 11. So yeah, that's the one I wanted to add. And another one um, that I wanted to add was like I mentioned before, I was, um, I just missed the cutoff when it came to um, enrolling at school in my age. And um, during that conversation, my parents had with uh, the principal, and I should add, this principal was not a supportive principal. He was absolutely horrid. Um, he convinced my parents, because my parents didn't know any better, I must admit, um, that, yep, I would be okay to go. It doesn't matter that I'm a bit younger. Um, it should be all good to go. No issues. Yep, yep, yep. She'll be all good. I ended up having to repeat year six due to um, starting kindy so early. So I guess my real big message I would like um, parents and even educators to um, take away from what I'm saying is it's okay for if a child is not ready to start school. Are they, it's completely fine, I think, really. And I understand in education, there is a push from trying to not let children re repeat now. Um, I think that's not good uh, and I think really um, what parents should really do is um, is to really reach out if your child's in some sort of preschool or early childhood setting prior, prior that they go into kindergarten is to have a chat with them have a proper chat with them and just say hey do you really think my child is ready for kindergarten and if not what are our options? And I just want to add on that, if you're like me in and in ACT schools, um, for those who don't know, I think every public school, every public primary school rather, has an attached preschool to it. So um, I do, I am aware of incidents where parents have approached priests, their, um, their child's educator, and they've gone, hey, we don't think our child's quite ready. And because of that, I guess, potential bias, I think. Um, there have been instances where children have been sent to a kindy when they're not necessarily ready. So I think really if that's not a viable solution for you to get an answer, I really think it's best to have a chat to your child's medical professionals as they would probably be the next best person to kind of give you an indication if your child's ready for kindy or not. I think it's it's probably fair to say it's one of the most challenging decisions as a family as to the when you look at when your child is born in the year, you know, whether it be in yeah, early. Yeah, on the cusp, because it wasn't like I was bang on the cusp. I think 
well, there was about four or five months within the class, but then it got interesting. When I moved to Canberra, I did a year in a Catholic school and the Catholic school cutoff is April. So because of that, that was one of the reasons I had to end up repeating. So I suppose the other the other thing to consider is um, you know what's happening in your local community as well. Are there other families that are juggling the same decision? Yeah. Um, might it be that there are a couple of kids staying um, out of school for that next year and, and going to you know kindy or preschool for another year? So um, obviously there's lots of professional opinions, as you said, Ashley, to um, to seek out. Um, you know, if there's an early childhood educator who knows your child very well, um, the opinion of the school um, and also um, the professionals in that in that child's life, whether it be, um, you know, GP, paediatrician, depending on on how many people you have involved <laughs> with that person. Now, we are going to just take a five minute break now. So the time is. 10.50 a.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time. We're going to take a five-minute break and then we're going to come back and talk about supports and adjustments. We're also going to have a Q&A session. So really keen to hear from our attendees if they've got any questions for our young people um, or anything they'd like us to discuss. Please pop into the Q&A function or, to, or you can directly message um, say Miranda or Daniel if you want to stay anonymous um, so we will come back at 10 55 so take five minutes you turn your cameras and your sound off and we'll be back shortly going to move on to talk about supports now and, and hear from Will, Jara and Ashley about the sorts of supports that and adjustments that they had in place um, to help them to be successful. And I know we've touched on some, some of those already, um, but keen to hear from you, Will, um, about the sorts of supports um, and adjustments that were in place that helped you be successful at school, please. Um. Yeah, just let me get my script up after the break. Um, there we are. Okay. So adjustments to my schooling, um, because of my cerebral palsy, um, I was in a classroom with stairs. So back then, back in the day, um, they had to assess the stairs and they had to assess me. So the oc occupational therapist came to the school and um, 
assess the stairs um, to make them more safer for me and the other students, um, just in case if I did have um, an accident going down the stairs, um, they knew what to do and all of that. Um, an adjustment. Uh, I had an adjustment to the curriculum. So, uh, yay me. <laughs> um, so they adjusted the curriculum to meet my needs, which we didn't ask for it. They just did it, um, which was really good because, um, of course, we would have asked for it, but they just did it from the get-go. So what sort so, of things um, do you mean when they adjusted it? So they adjusted the curriculum to suit my needs. So let's say, for example, uh, um, they were going to read a book. Yep. They would have to read a book to um, meet the needs of my le levelled reading. Yep. So um, I remember the book until this day. <laughs> It's um, Peter wears a, a pirate suit and it's one of my favourite books of all times. And, yeah. So was that the same book that everybody was reading or was that yeah. your... Yeah, so, so all of kindergarten, there yep. was two classes of kindergarten. It was a K-1 class um, and they were reading that book as well and we and my class was reading that book as well. And then the other classes were reading another book because I wasn't in their class. So, yeah. so that book was um, matched to your level? Is that, is that yeah. what you were saying? Yep. Okay. Yeah. And then that obviously helped um, yeah. with, with your reading, yeah? Yeah. Okay. And yeah. were there any other supports or adjustments you wanted to mention? Um, I had an an SLSO allocation. Yep, so it's um, a teacher aid, isn't it? Yeah, teacher aid. Yep, teacher aid for about all day. I'm pretty sure. So that was yeah. Because so, I needed so that back then. Yeah, and what sort of things did that person help you with or help the classroom? So with? they helped me with my handwriting. Yep. I had, um, because I've got dyspraxia, I had a slope, a um, handwriting slope thing where they put my handwriting on and um, I could form the letters properly and that really, really helped. Um, what else did they do? They helped me with my reading. They helped me in class. Um, back then I couldn't feed myself, so they helped me with that. Yep. Um, yeah. So, yeah. That's great. Thank you, Will. Thank you for sharing. Um, Jera, can I throw over to you? What sort of um, adjustments yes, or supports? Yeah, my, my question is, yes, lots of changes needed to happen for me at school so the purpose at the school helped they got teachers and aides to use large letters and numbers so so this is this is my picture hold it up a little i'll hold it up just to show you all really big fonts yeah. So those big letters and those big numbers jera was that because you were having a problem with your eyes when you were little yeah. Yeah, yeah, yes, case, yeah. that that was the case. I had no glasses. I couldn't read with them. I couldn't see with glasses. So it, it, it found it me really hard to read without wearing glasses. So, yep. so that was a bit disappointing for me. Then I made a lot of visuals. They, they, made? they made lots of visuals for me to use to communicate. So I used them in high school to show expected behaviour. So here's an example. Here's an example of one of the expected behaviours. 
expected behavior and unex unexpected behaviors and things to do and not to do and it was all a bit overwhelming yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. it was a bit overwhelming at the time you know so can i can i just check i understand that gerald so one side is the do and one side is the don't isn't it yeah yeah. And one's the holding hands and one's the hands off and one's the yep. other particular bit with social behaviour or unexpected behaviour. Yep. Okay. So does, does that give you a waiver or? Yeah, no, I, I was just trying to understand because I suppose. Um... That kind of makes a lot more sense. Yeah. Yes. Yes. The do's and the don'ts. That's really clear. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and the big state. Yeah. Move on to high school. Yeah, high school was harder because there were more students and subjects. I sometimes get into trouble, and I don't know why. When there was a camp in high school, my dad had to come to help me so I could go. I also needed help with toileting and transport. I needed someone to help me when I did table work, work one on one. At my primary school, I had vision, speech, OT, physio and dentist checkups. And we had smaller classes with lots of helpers. We had to cut away table, a gym, even a pool. Show some photos of that? So I'll show you photos of there's a cutaway table. There's a cutaway table that I was sitting on. Yep. Got, a, got another picture, which is the trampoline. Awesome. And we've got another one at the swimming pool. Swimming so, and this one is at recess and lunch, we could buy trikes shoot baskets and play on the equipment. Thank They're you. just things that you can reflect on. Yep. If you want to, or or I can share more detail or something no, like that. No, that's great. Thank you, Jarrah. Thank you. No um, worries. Ashley, supports and adjustments. What what helped you to be successful at school? <laughs> Sorry, I shouldn't laugh. Um, so I must admit, I quickly ran out to double check something with my dad. Um, we believe I had a TA in kindy. We think it didn't come through straight away. Um, yeah, we're not. Yeah, yeah, because I vaguely remember having um, TA support in my early years, but not necessarily kindergarten. So that it's a little bit hazy. But um, a lot of the time when I did have TA work. Uh, a TA with me, a teacher's aide, um, we, I would have a lot of one-on-one -on -one support and a lot of one-on-one -on -one work. Now, I know the idea is to try and step away from one-on-one -on -one work for some very valid reasons. However, there are also some very other valid reasons as to why the one-on-one -on -one work may be taking place. Um, so, yeah, that was kind of my big one. Unfortunately, as a um, female autistic person, we don't tend to get a lot of support in education because of how autism is um, shown differently in us compared to other people, more specifically males. Um, and so, yeah, the main thing I only really had was a TA, um, the odd one-on-one -on -one support, um, which would help in certain areas. I, yeah, a lot of my other supports, such as a modified curriculum and all that kind of stuff, didn't come in until about high school. Yep. So, yeah, that's only really what I had in high school, uh, in primary school, really. Okay. Um, and you were saying before about um, obviously not being aware that you were dyslexic until, was it year six, you said? Yeah, year five, year six, yeah. Yep. And obviously the challenges that that represents in adjusting the curriculum as well. Yeah. Do you remember um, particular subjects being uh, more straightforward or, um, or or ones that were harder? Like, was there a difference between your experience across different subjects? Um, well, in, in primary school, there's not a really like defined, okay, you're doing math, you're doing science, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So I can't, don't necessarily think I can comment on that 
area within a primary school, but from a general, my general high school, my schooling experience, um, yes, I would find a difficulty. I, I have always had really bad issues with math. I am horrible at math, can't add, subtract, save my life. Um, I would greatly struggle in things like math, but this is more talking about my later years. Um, I would thrive in classes like drama and languages, um, more specifically Japanese. Um, and so, yeah, I do find there, I would probably be more, not necessarily supported, but I'd feel more comfortable in other subjects. PE and sports was a huge issue for me because, again, having um, the fine motor issues that come with autism and um, I just also, I grew quite quickly compared to others. So there's a lot of developmental issues that come with that um, and having dyspraxia as well. So PE, sports, things. I actually, now that you mention it, I actually used to dread sport day. I absolutely hated it, having all those issues and not being properly supported. And on top of that, um, I have, I'm actually allergic to the sun. So I have a, yeah. Um, so having in a, an issue where I would have to be outside for long periods of time, I would be, um, I would be prone to potentially having, I get hives, really bad hives. Um, having hives from my reactions, then having the issues that come with the fine motor issues, with PE and stuff like that, that would be like a bit of a struggle thing for me. Was there a point, because um, obviously there, there's lots of things in those in those challenges, but um, I suppose for, for families, because um, it sounds like um, you're very clear about what you need, you're very clear about the challenges that you face in different environments. How, how do you, did you and your family get to that point where you, essentially you can advocate for what you what you need? Um, well, I mean, I sat in on enough uh, meetings to uh, know what I need. Um, a lot of the time as well, what would happen is, um, um, I'm trying to explain this to people that might not be aware of the terms of masking. Um, so what would happen within... Um, this happens with a lot of disabled children. Um, what will happen is we will tend to put on a mask within a schooling system so we don't bring out, um, we don't become vulnerable within situations. So that includes trying to hold in meltdowns, um, any kind of issues around that. And then the theory is once we get into our safe space that usually ideally being home, we let the mask off and we have the meltdown, we have the breakdown or whatever. So just to try and give a bit of context for that, that was me throughout my whole schooling period. Um, and that was one of the many reasons why I struggled to get support because um, I never saw it. <laughs> um, and so um, because of that, what, what would end up happening is I would um, have the meltdown usually with my mum because my mum would usually pick me up. And then we would discuss what had happened and would debrief and would talk about it. And then um, we would then kind of go, right, okay, because you need this, 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 and this, don't you, Ashley? And then I'd go, oh, well, maybe this as well, or also this. So you go, okay, let me send an email to your teacher. So then she does up the email and then that bit is done. But I still had that input in what I needed. So I guess that really kind of helped me with that. Because I suppose that's, one thing that that families will um, experience in particularly in the first um, couple of weeks of, of starting school is where um, you know behavior or, or, or experiences at school um, may then um, release themselves when the yeah. child gets home. I think of it as you know someone is slowly shaking their can of coke yeah. over the course of the day yeah oh, not... I, I hear this term used in earlier childhood education um around if you're doing something that annoys someone or is not good like a good positive behavior you're emptying someone's bucket so really it's really like take for example the student is the bucket we have all this water all these things that might be affecting us the classroom's too noisy the teacher didn't show up and no one's explained to us this um it's hot it's all these things would empty the water and by the time we're home we lose it thank you I appreciate that they aren't always great memories so I do appreciate you sharing those and reflecting on on how they've made you feel and, and the experiences that you've had um I hope that's um 
an okay experience for you. I know that um, definitely families um, appreciate that insight. Um, so really, thank you. Um, as we head towards the end of um, our webinar today, um, I'll get Miranda to jump to slide 19. Um, and we just wanted to sort of, I suppose, pull together a few things. Um, so this is looking at really what we're hoping um, that uh, everyone can have a positive start to school. So there's a lot of text on here. So apologies for that. But there's a link down the bottom. So this is actually from a piece of work that was done a while ago now. And it looks at what are the outcomes that we want when we get a positive start to school. Um, and there's 15 things there. Um, and there's a couple for children, a couple for families, and some for educators. So the idea that we can um, have a positive start to school, and Miranda's popped the link in the chat for us, um, and thinking about how being aware and being prepared um, and working gradually at um, the idea of being school ready um, can put everybody in the right frame of mind. So um, we really want to acknowledge that we can't prepare for every single possibility and that school is a learning experience for everybody. Um, so we, not everything will be right on the first day, um, first week, and possibly even depending on the first year. So it's an opportunity to work together across those different people that were in the equation that we looked at before. Um, and for children to feel safe and secure. Um, there's a lot of focus um, around reading and writing and letters and things like that. But I suppose the one message that um, we wanted to convey was that school readiness is about that open positivity towards learning um, and the opportunity to work together with families and educators for the best possible outcome for the children. So I'd encourage you to have a look at that document. It's housed on the um, Victorian Education website, but um, is equally applicable to any state or territory um, and has some great framing around what children, families and educators could look for when they're talking about being school ready. So in heading towards the end of today, um, we wanted to check in as to whether any of our audience had any questions, uh, questions for the young people or questions for the CIDA team. Um, happy to take those if you want to pop them in the chat or use the Q&A function. Um, so that link doesn't work. Okay, let me check. Um, Um, might not work on a phone. It should work on a computer, though. Thanks. We'll have a have a look now. If there are any questions um, from the audience, if not, I will um, actually throw over because one of the things that I asked Will and Jarrett and Ashley. Um, Yes, Ofa, we'll put the, um, the link to the worksheet, all those resources that we had on the screen before, I think is what you're asking about, the link to the resources, we'll do that. But sorry, I digress trying to read the chat and talk at the same time. I only do one thing at a time, it seems. So um, I'll throw over to Will. Um, your final reflection, what's the one thing that you want families to know about when they're getting ready for school? Never give up. Yep. Um, take one day at a time. Don't rush into it because I know certainly I did. <laughs> um, and meet the teacher and the teacher's aide beforehand because that really does help. Um. Yeah. So you could do the orientation days or open yeah. days. Yep. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, fantastic. Thank you, Will. Jera, what's your final reflection? What's the one thing you would like families to know? I want families to know it's good to find a school where teachers and students are friendly. Mum says to ask for recommendations recommendations, yeah. of schools from other families and therapists and to visit schools to find out their staff support and an attitude to make a school a place of belonging for people with a disability to go to a preschool first so you can get used to being in the group and doing planted things planned things thanks for having me today our pleasure thanks Joe. for having us today thanks Our everyone pleasure. ashley can i you get the last word ah uh, this is a tough one um i guess really I guess really you know your child better than the educators, medical professionals, all that kind of stuff. So um, if you don't think your child is ready, that is okay. <laughs> I suppose it's also remembering that school is typically for 13 years. So when you start that journey, it's a long journey. So there's opportunities mm. to, to pause and reflect and, yeah. and look at how you're going. Yeah. Fantastic. Okay. Um, like most of our webinars, we've just got a couple of things. Um, we will repost the um, support uh, phone lines and links in the chat as we go. Um, we would encourage you to join us for our um, final webinar. Um, and um, also, if you'd like to visit our YouTube account or our web page, um, you can find links to the materials, the worksheets, the slides, and obviously the recordings um, for those webinars. With all of our webinars, there is one in the first half of the day and there is one in the second half of the day. There are different young people involved in each of those webinars, so you get a variety of different experiences. So I'd encourage you to check those out, use those as um, a resource. And Miranda's posted the, the link in the chat for us. Um, Talking about school can be a tough subject for many people. So if you would like to access any supports, easiest place to head to is our site or webpage. It gives you um, supports and organisations based on your state if you use that um, search function. Um, but also we've posted as well um, some of the other places that you can check out. And as Daniel said in the chat and at the beginning of the webinar, if you would like to check in with him or have a chat with anybody um, at CIDA, please don't hesitate um, to contact us. Um, finally, it is um, important for me to say thank you very much to Will, Jera, and Ashley for being part of the session today and sharing your experience. Um, school probably does feel like a long time away. So to go back and think about all those memories is both <laughs> challenging and can be um, full on. So your um, contribution today is really, really important. So thank you very much. Um, for being part of this and thank you to our Auslan interpreters as well. So please stay safe, um, connect in with those that love you and take care of yourselves and we will see you all soon. Thank you for joining us.